Two, part two, or welcome to part two of my boss fights that I adore so much that I have a dedicated set file to the boss fights in Kingdom Hearts. And yeah, we are we are in part two, and to start part two, we have Oogie Boogie's boss fight in Halloween Town in the first visit. Now, I do prefer this Oogie Boogie boss fight compared to the one in the first game. Just, just me though. Just me though, most likely. But I do love Oogie Boogie's fight in Kingdom Hearts 2 compared to in 1. But again, it's just really cool though. It's just so cool. The idea of it too. Like having these having these conveyor belts and you have to go through H1 when it turns blue and to make sure you're in the right area that Oogie Boogie is in. It's definitely a really a really good boss fight, I can definitely say. And say, gotta make sure you go in the right area. Again, a lot of people may not like this version of the Oogie Boogie boss fight compared to the first game. But I certainly do. It's just something that I just that really hits when it comes to the Oogie Boogie boss fight on here. Again, that I just really love. And Oogie Boogie is another really good Disney villain as well. From a really good Disney movie as well. That really you can watch anytime. Not just Christmas, not just Halloween. They're in Halloween or Christmas. It's for really any time. And again, any holidays. Even though it is called Nightmare Before Christmas and it's Halloween and Christmas, you don't really have to watch it just around those holidays. Like I said, it's a, it's one of my personal favorite Disney movies, though. Especially that art style. I love, I love the animation of it. How they did with the animation of the movie. And again, Oogie Boogie is a really good villain as well. Yeah, again, to start, to start part two off of the favorite bosses that I have dedicated, our Kim Hearts bosses that I have his own save files to do for the uh, boss fights, Oogie Boogie is to start the second part of this, of this two, of this two-parter. Yes, y'all knew this one had to be on a save file I have to make dedicated to it. Twilight Thorn, yes, Twilight Thorn, the first boss of the game, 
and that introduces you to the reaction commands properly when it comes to boss fights. You know, like proper when you actually use the reaction commands on the bosses for the first time. This boss fight is just so amazing, though. When it comes to when it comes to the reaction commands that also make it even amazinger, you just gotta love this fight. It's just so good, though. Definitely one of my personal favorite fights as well. I mean, how can you not love this fight? It's just so amazing. Like, you, you just gotta love this fight. And again, having this as his own save file, this, this, this boss fight right here, deserves it, too. Because, after you beat it here, there's no any other times that we actually fight Dark Thorn, or Twilight Thorn again. And I find that kind of crazy to think about, too, that we never actually get to fight Twilight Thorn. Same thing with Trinity Armor, either. Like in Birth by Sleep. Maybe one day we can read those ghost fights too. Or have bosses, boss fights that are with them. Right, that would be really cool though. But again, just with the rea reaction commands, just makes me so excited to see what kind of amazing reaction commands we'll get in 4. Right, with the reaction commands returning in Kingdom Hearts 4, makes me so excited to see what amazing, awesome looking, rea epic moves with the reaction commands will be during, during boss fights. Again, a really amazing first boss fight. To Kingdom Hearts 2. You really do remember me this time. I'm so flattered. And yet we have another fight in the prologue. And that is the Axel or Lay fight with Roxas Joe Wilding two key blades. Yeah, I just love this moment. Even though it's not very long, I still love this moment. Because the cutscene is absolutely amazing, and again, just getting to Jill Will Keyblades as Roxas while fighting Leif. How can you not love this? Right, how can you not love this? It's just simply amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now you bow to me. <laughs> Yet another very favorite boss, or villain, Disney villain of mine, 
and that is Son Yu from Mulan. And the Son Yu boss fight in Kingdom Hearts 2 is definitely a really good boss fight. I mean, how can you not love this fight? I mean, again, it's fighting Son Yu. Because again, you have to love his character in Mulan. And this fight definitely absolutely amazing though. And of course you gotta protect the gates as well. Again, absolutely amazing. Especially the reaction command. Again, this is this is why I go prefer the first Mulan movie. Just because it has Song Yu. I mean, I don't, I don't hate the second Mulan. I just like the first Mulan better because of Song Yu. And this is also one of the fights that Mickey can sew up as well. If you die, Mickey can sew up. And I just love the darkness that comes out of Soyeon, Song Yu as well. Oh yeah, and he can also hit his bird as well. Knock out his bird. Especially how very early on this fight is. Again, you just gotta love this fight. Yeah, y'all saw this one coming as well. The final segment of the game. And again, I'm showing the data battle just to make it easier as well. So I don't have to worry about going to... I mean, obviously, I would be cutting back to when on the next boss, obviously. But for me, just to make it easier. But yeah, the final segment of Final Zemnus. I mean, how can you not love this, though? I mean, yeah, technically, I didn't really say anything about... I mean, technically, I didn't really say anything about things that have to be a not completed save file. I mean, this is a fight that I love revisiting. And I adore, as well. A boss fight that I adore. And again, this, this, this list, or this video, is bosses that I adore and I love. So yeah, I can put final bosses from the main story. Even if it's their, even if it's their data battle form, I can still put it in there. But again, I just love the final Zemnis part. This part right here. It's one of the best final boss segments in gaming history. Right? In gaming history. I mean, can I say that? Can I say that, though? I mean, for real, it is, though. It's one of the best in-game in segments in, ga in gaming history. I 
I mean, again, y'all have to agree with me, right? Certainly y'all agree with me. The music, the whole, the whole fighting, and especially the lasers, especially at the end as well. Again, you just have to love this fight. People refer to this as Zebra Zemnis. I've seen people say like Zebra Zemnis. Cause he's like a he dressed like a zebra, right? He's dressed like a zebra in black and white. I mean, of course, I like the first segment too. You know, at the tower. Right, I do love that part too, but I especially love this part right here. Again, I just love this. I just love this one of Zemnis better of the ones. And again, like I said. Who, who wouldn't love this? Again, because this is definitely one of the greatest final bosses in the game. And history as well. History as well. In gaming history. Especially fighting with Reiko as well. Reiko as a party member during this fight. Reiko, the friend you've been looking for throughout your whole the Sora's whole adventure up since the first game and fighting Zemnis right fighting Zemnis in the in the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 after reuniting with Reiko I mean Kingdom Hearts 2 was technically was technically planned to be the last Kingdom Hearts game. No, Nomura actually mentioned before that Kingdom Hearts 2 was was technically going to be the last Kingdom Hearts game of the franchise. But since Kingdom Hearts was so popular, right? Kingdom Hearts is so popular, it's still continuing to this day. And I'm very glad about that too. I mean, some people, some people never pl pretty much stopped playing the, or never played the later Kingdom Hearts games, because they do prefer Kingdom Hearts 2 being the actual end of the series. I mean, like I mentioned before, Namora, to see her, to so pretty much I just say as Namora. He did say about how Kingdom Hearts 2 was actually originally going to be the last game of the franchise. But again, kind of like how Spongebob was only going to have three seasons in a movie. But since it was so popular, it's still going on. And again, Reiko is such a good healer. Did I not mention that? Riku is such an amazing party member because of how good of a healer he is. Of 
how good of a healer he is. Again, just the dialogue, or the you know, battle quotes, too. Fire. Yeah, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know any human being that would say that they did not like this fight. Or, obviously I can understand when it comes to difficulty wise, but you know, of how amazing this fight is. I don't know how anybody would not love this fight. It's just, it's just absolutely amazing. Here's the laser belt, too. Again, that's what makes it amazing, too. The laser belt at the end. There's all these lasers that you have to reflect. Again, how can you not love that? It's just absolutely sick. Like, absolutely amazing. Like, those modes on Xemnas. shatter your heart here in this world of nothingness yes I am including Marlosa the final fight with Marlosa first his first phase and his second phase from chain of memories and this as, as well lightless oblivion devours you drown in the ever blooming darkness because again this is a fight that I do love to return to now and then as well to refight because again this is what the whole list is this whole list is about as well not just for own save files but fights that i really do love doing and just because actually fighting actually fighting somebody other than xehanort a Xehanort, you know, like Ansem or Xemnas or Young Xehanort or Master Xehanort. Or, again, Marlosa is technically not yet a Xehanort in Chain of Memories. 
right. He's not technically a Xehanort quite yet in the train of memories. But again, fighting somebody in the organization as a final boss other than Xehanort. Right. This is really cool. And even though Train of Memories isn't one of my personal favorite Kingdom Heart games, I still enjoy some of the boss fights though that the game has. Yeah, I do enjoy the, some of the boss fights that this game does have. I just don't really like the card mechanics. That's really one of the reasons why I don't like Chain of Memories is the whole card mechanics. And how it can be confusing at times to work around than, you know, what you would usually be used to, like a deck or like a command selection area. And now we have final, um, Marlosa. Again, a really cool final boss fight, I can say. Another one of my personal favorite final bosses, though. Especially the music. And it's not really that horrible, I would say. I mean, if you die in the final, or in this phase, if you die on the final phase of Marlosa, you have to do the re you have to redo the whole last fight again. And make sure make sure he doesn't pull those 666 six, six again. Yeah, make sure cuz he will pull those 666s. Six, 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 those three sixes. Which you have to be careful. Again, just get back your cards if you get them scattered. Do you want to spray them? Six six sixes again. Again, make sure you block those. Make sure you block those three sixes that he does. That Marlosa pulls. Yeah, it's three against one now. 
Yes, another fight that I wanted to definitely put in this is the boss fight and the Three Musketeers and Dream Drop Distance with Pay and the uh, Something Brothers. I can't not pronounce it. Huh? But you know it's both. And of course, what I'm fighting here is from the special portals. Not this, not this actual story fight with them, but their the ray fights with in their in this special portals. But I just wanted to include the cutscene in it as well, and I did change my keyblade. I changed my keyblade to the end of pain keyblade. I can. I just thought it'd be cooler to use to end the pinky blade. So yeah. I mean, I do have the actual story version of it in the save file, but again, I have so many save files that I can't remember which one is which that has the actual story version of this fight. But definitely one of my favorite fights in Dream Drop Distance, for real. Definitely one of my favorite fights in Dream Drop Distance, hands down. And now we got Pate. And again, I just love the Pate boss fights. You know, fighting Pate. When we actually get to fight Pate. Which I hope we get more Pate fights in the future. I'm sorry a lot of y'all are probably jealous of me using the End of Pain. But I'm sorry a lot of y'all were never able to get this Keyblade. I mean, I wouldn't risk... I wouldn't risk hurting y'all selves trying to get this keyblade because it is a—it's kind of a nightmare, or it can be. It's kind of a sort of a nightmare to actually get. So I would—I would kind of spare y'all if y'all. Well, if again y'all not getting the trophy for getting all the keyblades, but if y'all not getting the trophy, then yeah, I wouldn't—I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that y'all wouldn't need to try to hurt yourselves trying to get this keyblade. But like I said, definitely my favorite of the paint fights for sure. And of course, Speaking of Dream Drop Distance, we have yet another fight that I love with Sora, and that is with Rensler, or Tron in this case, which it's not often that we get a, a boss fight where we actually fight against one of our friends, where Sora fights against one of his friends. So this is something that makes it special. And so like I, and again, this is also going to be a fight where Correct. we 
I had to where I've re doing the well, fight in the purposes. special portal. Yes. Under the and right just playing the cutscene here in the huh? in the theater you have a area. Item called a keyblade. It can open any lock. And once again, right? change, change my keyblade once we over. actually do the fight. And I'll change Rinsler back into Tron. I just wanted to have these actual introduction scenes playing. The keyblade. I. So no, we won't be using the kingdom key. This is what lights the darkness. It just shows in the cutscene here that I'm happy. playing here. Huh. Flawed reasoning. I'll have to take it by force. But like I said, never actually had a fight where we actually are fighting one of our actual friends. You know, Disney friends. Not counting Rake again. When I mean Sora fighting one of his friends that he made. Not counting, obviously, Reiko or... Yeah, but you know you what I'm do it. Disney you can get through friends it. that Sora made like Tron because again Rensler is Tron you have to fight him. but Cora how can I have that key it will bring him to his second again if y'all watch the Tron Legacy which is a pretty good one but I just love the music and again just being able to fight one of our actual Disney friends that we make is so amazing let's go Tron and yes, I changed to the Ultima weapon now. But again, just the music in this fight, and again, just being able to fight one of our actual friends that Sora has made in King Hearts 2, and now fighting him now that he's evil, or turned to evil, and we have to bring him to his senses. It's just absolutely amazing, though. Such an amazing fight. I mean, again, how can you not love this fight, though? It's, a, it's definitely another one of my favorite Dream Drop Distance fights. And for a good reason, too. Definitely for a good reason. Especially how he just turns this, flips the stage as well. And once again, this is also another character, another fight that I did, I do have a save file of. But again, have a lot of save files that I couldn't find the one that had the actual story, you know, the actual story part of the fight in the actual story. Because I, I have it somewhere. It's just so many save files. But once again, an amazing fight overall. Absolutely amazing. With a Disney character. A Disney character that Sora befriends. And try and get him back. For this one, I just wanted to get straight into it. And that is Xemnas in Drain Drop Distance. Yes, I'm also putting him in... Or the Dream Drop Distance fight with Xemnas. A.K.A. Sora's final boss fight. Because technically this is the final boss fight with Sora. When it comes to Sora's part of the story. Before you switch to Reiko for the rest of the game. Definitely an amazing fight though. Again, when it comes to Zeminus, so... And the music. And yes, I am using the Unbound Keyblade.
This one may actually be a lot long, or a bit longer. This this part here, or this you know this part two. The video here may be a long, bit longer than the first part, but hey, it's fine. Definitely good find balls for Sora. And yes, we are now heading into off, Young Xehanort, which a lot of people, I've, at That's least what? I've seen, say of how they do not like the Young Xehanort fight in Dream Drop Distance. And mainly because a lot of people that I've seen never really liked Dream Drop Distance. But personally, again, Dream Drop Distance is definitely up there of my personal favorites. I just love the concept in the worlds as well. But, but again, yeah, next is Young Xehanort. And again, we are using the Unbound for Young Xehanort. And I just love the music here, too. Again, the music is really good. And Young Xehanort is definitely one of those very interesting characters, I can say. That I feel like we may have not seen the, the last of. Yeah, I just feel like we have not seen the last of Young Xehanort sent after Kingdom Hearts 3. Then, of course, we have this whole part, too, where he rewinds time, and you gotta destroy the clock before he rewinds the boss fight. Or, the whole fight. And he'll resource on his health. Yeah, he'll send clones too. He'll send some clones out too. That will that will stop you from getting to the clock. Or hitting the clock. But it's not so bad. It's not so bad, but definitely a really good fight, though. This abyss. Am I in Sora's dream? And here we have another fight that I absolutely love, especially when it comes to the final bosses. And that is the Nightmare what? Armor Venatus. Or, not Venatus. Armored Nightmare Ventus. A.K.A. the final boss of the game. Armor Ventus Nightmare. However you want to put it. I love the music and just... This is just an amazing final boss fight. Again, going into the dive to the heart as well. Back in Sora's dreams, frame Sora. Like, you just gotta love this fight, though. This is absolutely amazing. I love everything about this fight. How could you not love this fight, though? It's absolutely amazing. Especially the end bet here. We got a nightmare class with... with it. To defeat it. Boom! Next is not Clayton. Yes. Not Clayton. But it is technically Clayton, but no. not Clayton. Because 
This is the Clayton that the Heartless took over. They're in the deep jungle. The Heartless have taken over Clayton. Clayton? Not Clayton. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not Clayton. Not Clayton. But yeah, I love this fight with Clayton. He's another really good Disney villain. And being able to fight him as well, his not Clayton part is really cool. And also with the stealth snake. The stealth snake heartless as well in this fight. Yeah. And again, Clayton is another pretty, really cool, really cool Disney villain. He's a really cool Disney villain, I can say. And again, him teaming up with the Heartless just really fits him, too. And again, you can, you can practically check out the Snell Snake if you want to. You know, check it, check it out first. Probably best if he did take out the stealth snake first. But again, farewell to Clayton. Another fight that is amazing to do that I love replaying, and that is Sephiroth. First of all, in the first Kingdom Hearts game. Now again, he is a bit harder are complica more complicated to do in the first game than in the second one. But still, in the Platinum match. And be careful. Be careful with Heartless Angel as well. You know he's gonna do Heartless Angel. You know he didn't do Heartless Angel. You just gotta, you just gotta be prepared. Yeah, stop him. Stop him before he does Heartless Angel. Oh, I call him just in time before he did Heartless Angel. And make sure that you're level 100. Just to level 
recommend that I would say. Max level, level 100. I just recommend being level 100 before doing stuff so off. As y'all can see, of course I have to include Ansem from the first Kingdom Hearts. Not only because of the voice actor. I really love the voice actor in the first game. He's just a good... I prefer this Ansem voice better. But yeah, Ansem from the first Kingdom Hearts game. Come Guardian! <laughs> and of course, his multiple phases as well. Right, his multiple phases that he has. But again, this is something about this and some voice that I prefer more. I just like more with this and some. I mean, I don't hate the current and some voice actor from the later games. I just like, I just like this voice actor more for and some, for and some. And then, of course, the cement move. You gotta be careful with the cement. Open your heart. Then of course after you defeat a dark side, we go into the second phase with Ansem. But see, yeah, he will perform this move that if you do your block good enough, you can get him with it. Oh, I don't know how I didn't get submitted there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I didn't get submitted, but I'm happy with it. Oh, I got headed down.
Really, I just got out of the cement. <laughs> I just got out of the cement move. And yeah, we're back in it. Then we have the World of Chaos with Shirtless Ansem. <laughs> yeah, Ansem became Shirtless at this point. <clears throat> but I just try to ignore the lasers, especially if you're level 100 like me. And yeah, the world of chaos has a lot of phases. I can tell you. No BX. Again, this this is definitely has a lot of interesting phases though. And we go into these different cells as well. And guess how Ansem turned into a self as well. Like he turned into a self. This is crazy though. Just turning yourself into a self. And then we have to rescue Goofy. But he's got Dark Balls. They're not terrible. Dark Balls aren't bad. It's when we get to Donald is when, yeah, it's pretty bad for Donald. And then we get this head, the head of the self. That's the head of the sub. And now we gotta go inside and rescue Donald. Which, yeah, he got invisibles. 
He's got invisibles. Those are horrible. These are horrible. The invisibles. Donald's got it horrible in hair. Yeah, Donald's got it horrible in hair by having invisibles. The invisibles are awful. And now we got the final, or the final two phases. We gotta destroy, I guess, the core of the ship, and then we got final anthem. blow up the head of the sip, and now we gotta defeat the, the heart or the core of the sip. This is, I guess, the core, like the main power source of the sip. Wait, I would say, I'm not sure exactly. And now we got Final Ansem. Now we have final Ansem. Let's we just attack him. There we go. Is this the answer? It can't be. It is futile. The keyblade alone cannot seal the door to darkness. Kingdom Hearts! Fill me with the power of darkness! Again, I really love this final boss fight. It's another one of my favorite final bosses. Free darkness! Again, just... Again, I just love the voice of Ansem in the first game. I'll always love this voice of Ansem. being. It's all that I have. It's what holds the pieces in place. I accept that. Next we have a boss that is from the DS. You which, yeah, you I have accept. recently played not a Recoded and I love this final boss fight in Recoded with Roxas. <gasps> it's way past time that you learn what real hurt feels like. This fight I absolutely loved. I really loved this fight when it came to the DS of Kingdom Hearts. Like, it was absolutely amazing. I adored every moment of it. And, again, just because it's Roxas, right? We're talking about Roxas. So, of course, it's a 
That's a fight that I absolutely would adore. Why won't you do it? What is Cloud doing? Beats me. Another fight, which again is Sephiroth from Kingdom Hearts 2. By the way, you three. And again, I cannot find the save file of where I actually haven't beaten Sephiroth. Well, I'm so, sure I'm just able to show the cutscene of the opening of the Sephiroth fight. But again, I love this fight, especially with the reaction commands. And especially the keyblade that you get by, at the end of the fight. Again, I do have a save file of this fight somewhere. But again, I just can't find it. I looked and I can't find it. I know I do somewhere, I just can't find it. Well, like, yeah, another one in the list I have a safe file dedicated to. John Spada. Are you lost? Prisoners don't belong on deck. Your station is in the freak! Yep, that's what is coming. <laughs> The Davy Jones fight in Kingdom Hearts 3. And my favorite Pirates of the Caribbean bot villain as well. And I love this fight. Because again, it's against Davy Jones. While we're on the Flying Dutchman. And again, I just love this fight. Being my favorite Pirates of the Caribbean villain. And again, we're on the Flying Dutchman as well. We're on the Flying Dutchman. Especially since this boss pretty much takes place in, when it comes to the movie, it's in the third movie. And I love the third movie of the Pikes and Caribbean. That's my favorite. But again, it has the flying duck, or it has Baby Jones. The whole what this boss fight takes place of in the third movie. And I just love that he summons the Kraken as well. I definitely prefer... I definitely prefer this fight compared to the um, Barbosa one. When it comes to the Pirates of the Caribbean villains, this one I definitely prefer over the Barbosa one and two. Just me, though. And again, just, just the whole where this fight is taking place, it makes it amazing as well. And again, I definitely, this one's definitely worth having a separate save file on. So I can replay this fight whenever I would want to. Look at how amazing it is. So long, Davy Jones. The next fight in Kingdom Hearts, that boss fight that I adore, and that is Mother Gothel's Heartless. Mother Gothel's Heartless in the Rapunzel world, the Tangled world. Her presence would only cast a pall over it. Yes, Mother Gothel's Heartless. 
Say deserves to have a Heartless, though. And this Heartless fight... ...is really amazing, though. Mutter Gospel's Heartless. Look at her Heartless, though. Ain't she hideous? <laughs> she is ugly, I can say. Who knew her Heartless would look so ugly, but in a good way, as well. Mother Gossel's Heartless is needing a makeover. <laughs> and I'm saying that in a very good way, because of just the design, I really love it. Definitely one of the early game, best early game bosses. You're gonna sneeze, so being able to sneeze in this fight. And of course we have her DM as well, which is summoning days. To block your way. To block your path. Just knock her down. Knock her down. Her dam again. <laughs> Oh, I thought we would have been high enough to be able to go over it. But yeah, Tangled is definitely another one of my favorites. And Mother Gossel is definitely a really good villain, I can say. Another one of the good villain category of Pixar and Disney. And being able to fight her as well in her heartless form is really cool. Goes Mother Gossel. Huh? Where's Goofy? Huh? I saw him. I got an idea. Yet we have another well, fight that. Oh, that's perfect. Yet is in Arendelle against Marshmallow. Yes, I always love this fight, especially since he becomes a party member not so long after this fight. And he's just a really cool character in Frozen, though. Oh, yeah! The fight against Marshmallow. Bring it, Snowball! Again, it's just such a cool fight.
Like, how, how can you not love this fight? That's what I want to know. How would you not be able to love this fight? And of course, this command as well. Move. Oh, knocking him down to the ground like that. If we can dodge those like that, then yeah. Like bam, you're gonna go. You're gonna be on a roll here. Get him like that. <clears throat> Knock him with that tray again. <clears throat> Getting his armor off. Like, how can you not love this fight, though? Especially the music. How cool the music is that plays for this fight. It's so... It fits so well. Miss the dodges. That's fine. Alright, that's all good. Just miss the dodges, it's fine. We're almost on the edge here. Yeah, we got him. A good fight. Yep, we have another Arendelle boss fight. And I like to call this Hans's Heartless. I'm pretty sure this is, even though in the description, or the info, the info that it shows during the boss fight, when it begins, it doesn't say Hans is Heartless, but it, I do like to call it Hans's Heartless. Do you really think this will help, Mama? 
Yeah, I, I like to call it Hans's Heartless. Just because, I mean, the darkness that swallowed Goofy, Donald, and Sora in this arena, they have come from Hans, right? The darkness that was in Hans. So, I would like to say that this is Hans's Heartless. But yeah, this is definitely another favorite of mine. And again, the music as well. Using the happily ever after keyblade. And again, having Marshmallow, the previous boss fight we had as a party member during this fight. It's just so cool, though. And then, of course, we have the DM. He has his desperation mode. Obviously, that's what Dion means. His desperation mode. Once we gotta... We gotta wait until the command shows up in order to join up with... with Marshmallow. Like this. Such a cool move, too. I really love that move. Dying on us now, Goofy. That's what I say. Don't be dying on us now, Goofy. Again, I just love a lot of these heartless fights, though. And three. Good thing Darn about to die. about to go into go into his DM again. I'm 
pretty sure he's gonna be going into his DM again soon. Yep. Is it his DM again? Just wait until it shows up, or pops up. Come on now. There we go. <laughs> just, just hoping, and just hope, that he'll, that, that command will pop up for you to actually do, to escape that part. escape it before, or get out of that before it's too late. Another, again, another great fight. The next fight is, that I love fighting is the data, uh, um, Seon. The data fight of Seon that I love fighting. I mean, how can you not love this fight? It's definitely a really amazing fight. Especially the music, the moves as well. It's, it's just hard not to love this fight. Right. It's definitely a fight that is very, it's very hard. Like, how can you not love? I mentioned the music though. Just don't, just make sure you don't get hit by the beams though. Again, say, because it'll shrink your health bar. It'll shrink your health bar if you're not careful. Again, that's something you definitely need to be careful with. Of 
Okay, you really gotta be careful. If you're not, well... And, well, you're just gonna have the consequences. So definitely be careful when it comes to fighting Data Seon. But again, again, she's definitely one of the really good characters as well. That you just gotta love. And of course her DM as well. Here we go. Gotta be careful with her DM. You definitely would need to be careful with her DM here. Again, she does not play around there. She does not play around. Of course, she's gonna go back into her this form, her armored form. Look at how small she shrunk in that health bar, though. That is power. <clears throat> like, absolute power. Again, okay, a really good fight with Sion. And of course, we have to include my favorite secret boss in Kingdom Hearts, Yazora. Like, we have to include this. Because, again, I adore this boss so much. My old, Definitely my favorite secret boss in the franchise. And I'm so excited to see what Kingdom Hearts 4 baits with the secret bosses. I don't think so. When it comes to secret bosses. You 
I, I just absolutely adore this fight. And I do also want to mention, I did forget to mention, when editing this video, because, yeah, there was some combining days together. I did forget to mention the Lingering Will and Kingdom Hearts 2, the secret, by, the secret fight with Lingering Will. Yes, he's also in another, in this list as well. I just forgot to mention him. But just to let y'all know, I do absolutely love his fight as well. With the Lingering Will and Kingdom Hearts 2. So I do want to mention that. He's also on the list. I just want, just as a mention, because I forgot to mention him. Or just actually show it. But of course, yeah, of course the Lingering Well would also be on here, but when it comes to secret bosses, Yozora definitely baits it for the secret fights. I'm so excited to say what the future lies for this guy, this man. Especially since we don't know what his actual look is. What he actually looks like. Because, yeah, this is not what he looks like. This is not what he actually looks like, as he states in the cutscene. And the opening Got this. to this fight. Got this. And one word of advice for y'all to to have is to make sure y'all don't have a Coco coin with you. Yeah, make sure y'all don't have a have a Coco coin with y'all. Especially since we're in Quadratum, too. Right, we're fighting in Quadratum. On a... On a building. We're fighting on a building. It's on. And I really love his DM as well, right here. Just make sure that you 
dodge the ra the boy lasers, especially. And of course the mech bat as well. Again, just go in a link, a random link. <laughs> just go into a random link, summon whatever. Go into a random one. blue lasers and also he will also drain your HP as well the blue lasers will also drain your HP so be careful Yeah, make sure he doesn't steal your keyblades either. That would not be good. Yeah, that would not be good if he stole your keyblade. Gotta make sure he doesn't take your couple coin or anything, because he will. And he can take your elixirs or your potions too. What a great fight Gazora is. I'm so excited to see the future of this guy. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have Old Man Xehanort himself. 
And like I said, this isn't in a list, or, you know, like a numbers list. Because obviously, if it would be a numbers list, then obviously Gazora would be at number one. But these are just ones that, obviously, not go in any, any order or anything. But yeah, the final boss of Kingdom Hearts 3, with Master Xehanort, his armored form, starting off with... Yeah, starting off with his armored form. This is definitely what you would also call an amazing final boss as well. being able to go underwater as well and fighting Master Xehanort too. And the music too. Again, a lot of these fights definitely come with of how of how good they are with the music. And this is certainly what you call Master Xehanort, though. For real, though. And Master Xehanort grabbing Sora by his throat and slamming him down. Like, man. That is something for an old man to do. Grabbing a a young boy, a young man like Sora, grabbing him by the throat and throwing him down to the ground, that is some power. <laughs> that is some power for a 90 to 80 year old man that Master Xehanort is. He, he does look like he's probably in his 80s at least, probably close to his 90s. Again, that is some power for an old man. And then we have Final Xehanort. Final Master Xehanort. And him using the Keyblade as well. Or the X-Blade to make it more better to, you know, less confusing. By saying the keyblade and of us using obviously the key the keyblades we use and the actual keyblade with the X blade. Yeah, I just like pronouncing it as the X blade to make it easier. But like I said, Master Xehanort being like an 80 year old man, he has some power grabbing. Grabbing kids by the throat, like Sora, young men like Sora, by the throat and slamming them, slamming them. Like, that is some power. <laughs> I would not, I don't think I would ever see an old man doing something like that. <laughs> For real. I, I don't think I would ever see an old man do something like that, have that kind of power. And summon meters as well. Lots of meters. Like, that's literal power. <laughs> that is power. And I'm impressed. I'm impressed with Zaynor. I may not, we may actually not get to his actual DM part because of how good we are here. Gotta make sure we hit young Zan or Master Xanort to get our light back. Yeah, 
Yeah, we skipped his whole DM. We skipped the whole DM. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You can skip his whole DM. Which is pretty crazy, though. His DM is pretty crazy. But again, a really good fight with Master Xehanort. y'all enjoyed this two-part two-parter video of selling bosses that I adore and boss fights that I have dedicated save files to fighting that most fights that you won't be you could can't really replay and unless if you make a new save a new game to actually be able to fight those bosses again yeah I'd like to know what y'all think and I can definitely say that Kingdom Hearts 4 is definitely going to have some competition as well when it comes to certain bosses. That will have dedicated save files too.